the big day is finally here. I can review Avengers Tower and show it to you guys in person for the very first time. This is a $500 Lego set with 5,201 pieces, 32 characters, and it's modular scale, so it will fit right into your Lego city. And the craziest part is, it is 2 feet and 10 inches tall. So, this is one of the tallest Lego sets ever to be made, and it is absolutely, absolutely incredible in person. We've got tons and tons of minifigures to look at and review, but before we do that, I just want to give you a quick glance over the entire model. As you can see, there are over 200 window pieces in this set, and that does take quite a bit of time to actually snap together, but when it's all said and done, the model looks absolutely awesome, and it uses tons of innovative build sequences to get around some of the unique challenges that a model like this presents with the sloping and the curvature of the build. From start to finish, it is an incredibly fun build. I would highly recommend popping on some Avengers movies and getting in the spirit while you're building it. And I do have to say, it is incredibly sturdy to move around and pick up. Of course, you want to be careful where you pick it up from. And these are all things we're going to talk about as we get into the review further. But I do have to say that the build experience is absolutely awesome. And really, it's hard to think of a bigger, better Marvel set that could rival this one. But let's be grateful for what we've got here and let's get into the review. Well, we've got a ton of figures to look through and I'm really excited to do that. But in order to put them in some sort of order, I'm gonna go in chronological order of appearance in the MCU, at least by my calculation. So that starts us off with Tony Stark. Now the outfit he's wearing here, this is kind of the Legoized version of his Black Sabbath shirt from the first Avengers movie. Now that being said, this figure has come in lots of sets already. And just like several figures in this set, he does not bring anything new to the table, except for the bracket on the back of his neck, which as we'll see a little bit later in the video, can connect him to be able to be flying outside or rather falling with style as Woody and Buzz would put it but yeah that's really cool and then of course we've got the head with the HUD on the back and yeah not a lot new here but definitely an essential character for Avengers Tower. Next up is Pepper Potts, and this is the same one we've been getting in several LEGO sets lately. She does have the reversible head with the angry face on the other side, but the one new thing that she does come with is this cool little monitor here, and as you can see, there's a cheeseburger on there. We know Tony loves his burgers, and it looks like there's an incoming call, and this is referencing the little, like, translucent iPad thing that Coulson hands her in the first Avengers movie, so that's definitely a cool little callback, and I love when the accessories do that. Here we have the Iron Man Mark VI armor, and this is an armor that we have gotten several times in LEGO before, so unfortunately there's nothing new here. It does utilize the newer version of the Iron Man helmet, which is a little bit more sleek compared to the one that you may be used to if you were collecting LEGO Marvel back in the day. I admittedly do not like this helmet very much. I don't think it looks good from the sides. It does look decent from certain angles from the front, but overall, I think that the old helmet was so perfect, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Anyways, this figure does have really great torso printing on the front and back, as well as leg printing with hip printing and toes. And then, of course, you can put him on these studs to have him flying. And just like I showed you before, you can open up that mask. And on the back, we get the HUD head. So they give us several Tony Stark heads here, which is nice because in the past when we've gotten Iron Man's, they'll put like a translucent head on there to show that it's like in waiting mode. And it is nice that at least this version of Iron Man does have the Tony head underneath as well. Our first brand new figure is the Iron Man Mark VI, which as you can see here is battle damaged. And not only does this make it pretty much our very first battle damaged Lego Marvel figure ever, if you don't count Nebula from Guardians Volume 2, but it's also our first battle damaged Iron Man and it's a new figure exclusive to this set. We can lift it up and you can see that translucent head I was talking about before. And then of course, we've got the great torso print there where you can see like the inner wires and things like that. And I just love battle damaged figures. Figures. Mark, one of the designers on this set, said he loves doing battle damage as well, so hopefully that's a good indicator to come that we could get more figures like this in the future. 
here we've got Nick Fury, and this is a figure we've gotten in many LEGO Marvel sets before, so he doesn't bring anything new to the table, but there is something I want to point out. If I zoom in on the torso, you could see that there's like a mark on there, and that is like absolutely a factory defect mark right there in the gray part of his torso. And look, I hate to complain too much because it's a figure that we've gotten in previous sets, but if you guys are going to be shelling out $500 for this set, I think it's important to know when there are things wrong, and there are some things that do need to be talked about in this set that were wrong for me, so I'll point those out as we get there, and all I can say is thank goodness that my Nick Fury was messed up because I already have several of these. Could you imagine if this figure was messed up when it's exclusive to the set? Now, to be fair, LEGO does replace that stuff if you want to reach out to them and let them know there was a problem, but in a $500 set, it should be pretty much flawless out of the box, and I do think it is worth being honest with you guys and pointing out what happened here. Okay, we've got our Big Fig Hulk, and this is the very first Hulk that can ever have his head be able to turn. As you can see, he also has a hairpiece there, and the hairpiece is actually pretty standardized that it can fit on a minifigure, so that's what it would look like. Oh my gosh, Nick Fury's kind of looking like uh, Sam Jackson's character from Pulp Fiction there. But talking about the hairpiece, I do want to note that you know, as you turn the Hulk's head, see how the hairpiece spins pretty easily? It doesn't have a lot of grip on there, and because it doesn't have a lot of grip, it's very easy to knock off of the figure. Because it's so easy to knock off the figure, I think it's worth noting that, you know, if a little kid is going to be playing with this, you should be aware that it's easy to lose that hairpiece, and the set only comes with one, so just be aware of that as we get into this. As you can see, he does have some, like, light bluish gray pants, which are unique. They did not give him toe molding or even toe printing that we've gotten on previous Hulks. Kind of an interesting style choice there, and he does have these studs on his back, which is pretty unique because you could, like, put a figure on there like riding Hulk's back or something, or you could do like a cool effect where like maybe Thor is running up behind Hulk or something. So there definitely are some unique opportunities there. And I do think that this is one of our best Hulk minifigs ever to date. But again, the hair really does come off the figure easily and the head can be removed too. If you lift that off, that head will also fit on a minifigure torso. Uh, it would look pretty goofy, but technically it could happen. So yeah, that's the Hulk. Up next, we have Black Widow, who is technically exclusive to this set, but in a unique way. The head, hair, and torso, even the arm printing, all came on the 2023 Avengers Quinjet. The only thing exclusive here, I suppose, is her having this gun, although the gun's not exclusive to this set, and these new legs, but these same legs are used on Hawkeye and Falcon later in this set. So as we go through there, pay attention to those legs. Overall, it is a nice figure. I mean, especially because the 2023 version of this figure that came out earlier this year was pretty much flawless, except for not having leg printing so it is a nice upgrade I'm not really sure what else they could have done to make it different other than give it leg printing but getting unique leg printing instead of three characters in the same set having the exact same legs would have been nice i think Okay, up next is War Machine, and this is the same War Machine that came in the Iron Man Armory set, and this is a nice inclusion because you may not have gotten that Armory set because it's so expensive. It's crazy that you could get five of that Armory set at retail price for basically the same cost as this set, but hey, I have the same critiques here that I did there. I think that the helmet does not look good, especially from the sides. It looks like the chin is kind of weird, and I don't know. He just seems kind of derpy to me, if I'm being honest, but we can lift it up. And you can see we've got the roadie head underneath and we can flip that around to see that there's no printing on the other side interestingly enough so it is a nice figure don't get me wrong but i don't think it's a great figure it's nice that he was included but you know it is another repeat figure and we all feel the same about that here we have Thor, and Thor is an interesting figure because he does have a cape that only has one hole in it. Traditionally, we've gotten those with four plus sets. Uh, so I do actually kind of like it here, though, because when you have these spongy capes, which I'm not a big fan of, and you have them overlapping, it does kind of make it bulk up around the neck, and having this gap in the back does look pretty good for Thor, admittedly. Now, he does not have leg printing, which I still think is a big miss, but he does have a brand new hairpiece for the Thor minifigure. Not to say that this is a new hairpiece overall, it's just the first time it's been used on Thor. We can flip that head around and see he's got the lightning eyes, and I do think that that looks good for Thor, 
but maybe not for Avengers 2012 Thor, since he didn't have that ability yet that we see in the later MCU movies. Although he does channel lightning, so it is what it is. Speaking of channeling lightning, we get a really unique build here for Mjolnir, and it uses this translucent J piece here, and then you use a uh, one by one cylinder cone piece here, and then this really cool Ninjago style lightning piece, and then you can have Thor throwing Mjolnir, you could have him throwing it up, around, whatever the case may be. And I really, really like that. It looks great and it offers a lot of different posability and play options that we haven't ever been able to do with Thor quite like this. So I do really like that a lot. Here we have Loki, and this is the same Loki that came in the 2023 Quinjet set, and it makes a lot of sense to include him here since this is the Loki outfit most associated with Avengers Tower. He does have this really nice gold helmet here that's in a new color for 2023 compared to the previous Loki helmet you may have if you've been collecting for a number of years, and that helmet does come off, and you can flip the head around, and he has the muzzle on the other side, of course, that we see in Avengers 2012 and Endgame, and he comes with a hairpiece that you could put on there as well so that the helmet can be removed. It's also worth noting that on our Iron Man figure from earlier, we also get a spiky hairpiece for him, so you could do an unmasked Tony as well. I forgot to mention that earlier. Anyways, as far as Loki is concerned, he does come with his scepter here, but it's kind of funny because there's a computer screen in the set that we'll see in a little bit, and it actually has the scepter the way we see it from the movie, and here they just kind of went for a generic scepter, so that's kind of lame. You can see there is a little bit of back printing on the figure, and he does have leg printing as well. I will admit, I think that this is one of the best LEGO Marvel minifigures of the entire year, and it's been a great year for Marvel, and this one really holds up at the end of the day. Up next is Eric Selvig, and he comes with his little laptop accessory here, which you can fold the laptop, and then there's a little slot that you can insert it into his hand. He's got dark gray legs, he reuses the torso from Jerry Seinfeld from the Seinfeld set, and the head is Luthen's head from Star Wars because he's played by the same actor, so that makes a lot of sense. I do like that they included Selvig. It is a little bit odd that they reuse so many pieces, like technically you could have built Selvig this whole time, so he's not exclusive as far as parts are concerned, but he is exclusive in terms of being offered in a Lego Marvel set, and this is actually our first Selvig ever, and it definitely makes sense that he comes with the tower. All right, here we've got Hawkeye, and remember what I said, he and Black Widow use the same legs in this set, so be mindful of that. But the torso is brand new, and unfortunately, it is the only exclusive piece to this figure. It is really nice with the shield detailing up there in the corner, and of course, the red glove on the hand. We'll go ahead and remove the hair so that you can see it doesn't have a face on the back. This is just a generic head that Star Wars has been using for quite some years. And we'll take the quiver off the back too so that you can see what the back of the torso looks like. Now, guys, I was really hyped about getting a new Hawkeye, but I have to admit, I think it leaves a lot to be desired, especially when you look at the CMF Hawkeye that came out literally just a couple of weeks ago. The head on this, to me, looks a lot more like Jeremy Renner. They did use the same hairpiece, which is nice, but I don't know. I think that this looks a lot more like Renner than this does, and considering this head already exists in the Lego piece pantheon, it is a little bit odd to me that they went with such a generic Star Wars head, but I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. We do get two Captain Americas in this set so that you're able to recreate the battle scene from Endgame, and that is really cool. They're the exact same Captain America, except one has the mask on and the other does not. If we lift this helmet up, you can see it is the Captain America head that we've been getting in previous sets. But again, another thing I want to point out is that there is some wonky printing on this head. You can see on his eye on the left side of your screen, it's kind of like messed up the printing. So, you know, again, it's not the end of the world. I already have this figure. It's come in several different places. But when you're paying $500 for a Lego set, it really should be perfect. And I have to admit, that's not perfect. So on the other side here with Cap, he does have a reversible head. And both Captain Americas come with shields, but one of them is actually sort of built into the diorama of the set so I left it there so we can find it when we get to that point of the set. We do get four Chitauri soldiers in this set. You can see that two of them come with brick built guns and two of them do not and I do have to admit I do think that these are the best Chitauri we've gotten to date but they are far from exclusive to this set. They've come in several sets at this point and I do think that it's a catch-22 right because four of the minifigure slots of this entire set were eaten up by these characters and I think that that's lame. You know, we could have gotten Quicksilver or so many other characters, really. I'm going to make a separate video about that. But 
At the end of the day, it does make sense to have some Chitauri for the Avengers to battle against, so it's kind of a catch-22. I would have literally rather had four other Avengers, but at the same time, it is nice to get these for battles, and it does make the displays nice, so I'll leave it there. Up next is Alexander Pierce, who totally makes sense to appear in this set because of his appearance in Avengers Endgame, actually Robert Redford's final acting credit, believe it or not. The torso did appear in Gringotts Bank earlier this year, so it's not exclusive, and the head came on Belloc from Indiana Jones, so that's not exclusive either. So, uh, it's another one of those Catch-22 minifigs. Did they really need to make a brand new suit and head for this? No, absolutely not. But it is a little bit of a bummer that this figure has been right in front of us this entire time, and you could just make this with pieces from Bricklink or whatever. I guess that's true for any figure, but you know what I mean. It's just nice when they give us something special and exclusive to these sets, rather than something that's cobbled together from pieces that have been out for some time now. Up next, we've got Falcon, who is the exact opposite of what I was just saying about Alexander Pierce. I love this one because it uses so many new pieces and stickers and things like that to give us a truly unique figure for this set. The only piece that is reused, actually, is the legs, which have been on Black Widow and Hawkeye in this set so far, and I guess you could argue that the hair has been on several figures, too. Everything else, like the torso and all these stickers on the wings, are new. It is a bit odd to me that they went with a brick-built wing when we got the perfect wings ever for Sam Wilson Falcon in the CMF series, but all these stickers do look pretty nice. You've got red wing that can detach off the back there, this little triangle piece, so that's cool, and overall, it does look great. Now, I will lift the head up so that we can take a look at the back of the torso as well, so you can see what Falcon looks like without the wings on. You can see that it's kind of like his pack is retracted there, and that looks great, and I do like that they put a band on the back of the head to show his, you know, uh, goggles going around the whole head, and overall, this is one of my favorite figures in the set because I think it translated from screen to Lego perfectly. Here we've got Scarlet Witch, which is a good figure in its own right, but an odd inclusion here because she's in her Endgame outfit. The only time she was ever at Avengers Tower, she was in her Age of Ultron kind of casual outfit, so... I don't know, this is what's called a minifigure bleeding across sets, and that's a term that LEGO designers use where they say, well, this is the only Scarlet Witch that's currently in production, so we're going to go ahead and put this in the set rather than make a brand new figure. My argument would be, well, as nice as the waist cape here is, it's a great inclusion, don't get me wrong, all they needed to do was make a new torso for the Age of Ultron torso. Is it really that crazy just to make one new torso for a $500 set? I'll let you guys decide that, but the waist cape is nice. We can lift the head up and you can see it is the Scarlet Witch head that we've gotten before with the angry red eyes. And I'm not saying it's not a great figure, it's just not the perfect inclusion for this set. And in a $500 set, I think everything should be perfect. But hey, that's just me. Here we've got Dr. Helen Cho, and she kind of leans into my Scarlet Witch argument, right? This is a brand new torso that was designed for this set and debuted in this set. So if they could make a brand new torso for Helen Cho, why couldn't they do one for a literal main character Avenger, Scarlet Witch, to make her accurate to the movie? That being said, the head is reused on Helen Cho. It's a head that we've gotten in several places before. And yeah, you know, it is what it is. It's a fine figure, but also a little bit of a weird inclusion. I mean, it does make sense. She worked on Hawkeye at Avengers Tower in Age of Ultron, but I think a lot more people would have been excited over getting a character like Quicksilver or even an alternate outfit or another Iron Man armor here. So a fine figure, nothing really wrong with it, but definitely an interesting head scratcher when you think about the Scarlet Witch torso situation and the fact that this was included versus any other Avengers. All right, here we've got Ultron Mark I. This is an absolutely awesome figure, and it's the second time we've ever gotten Ultron Mark I in Lego form. The first one was with the 2015 Avengers Tower, which was considerably smaller than this, but I have to admit, I have always loved that Ultron Mark I armor. I'll be doing a comparison video on the channel soon, so hit like and subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I can't decide if I like this one more or not. Granted, I've had the Ultron Mark I in my collection since 2015, and I've had this one in my collection for a few days, so I don't think it's fair to make a knee-jerk reaction and say which one I like more right off the bat, but the fact that I don't love it immediately makes me wonder if I'm going to like it more in the long run or not. Regardless, he's got toe printing, hip printing, and just great prints all around. Arm printing would have been awesome, but I don't think there's a single character in this set that got arm printing, so I guess that's a tall order, you know? 
Okay, here we have a literal MVP of the set, and that is Vision. Now, the big thing about this Vision is that he's phasing. So you can see that his legs are translucent, and he does have some printing on there that, would, that looks great. And his cape is what's called a foil cape. So you push this out of like a piece of plastic, and that allows for the bottom to be see-through as well. So that looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and lift the head off so that you can see what the back looks like, the back of the torso, that is. And there's a lot of great printing available there as well. One thing I want to point out is that on the inside of the cape, it does say copyright 2023, the Lego group. And by the time you put that on vision, it's actually hidden under the figure. So you can't see it, but I do commend the designers for being able to hide that so well so that you don't see it once it's on the figure. But I do have to scratch my head why it's on there at all. It seems like it's just kind of making problems for itself. But I guess that's a good way that you'll always know the authenticity of the cape for future value down the line. And I do love the way this figure looks at the end of the day. So here we have Wong, who is a head scratcher of an inclusion in this set because he's never ever had anything to do with Avengers Tower at any point. So when you include Wong instead of like Spider-Man or other characters who have literally been at Avengers Tower, it is a little bit odd if you ask me. That being said, it is the same Wong that we got in the Sanctum Sanctorum last year. He comes with a hot dog accessory and the instructions explain that it's a hot dog with mayo like we hear Hawkeye and his family talk about in Avengers Endgame, and there is a place specifically to put Wong coming through a portal, which of course we'll look at when we get into the set at large, but yeah, I don't know why we got this instead of Spider-Man, it is a little bit on. Okay, another one of my favorite figures in the set is Wasp. Oh my gosh, we've been waiting since 2018 for another Wasp minifigure, and this one used the new Ant-Man style helmet for the first time. Now again, this is one of those kind of odd inclusions because Wasp literally has never had anything to do with Avengers Tower, but the designer of this set, Mark Stafford, one of the designers that is, mentioned that Wasp and Ant-Man were a part of the original comic book Avengers lineup, and so that's why they wanted to include her here as an homage to that. And hey, my girl Wasp, I can definitely go ahead and sign up for that. So yeah, we do have Wasp here and you could see that you could put the wig on her so you could have the regular hair. Interestingly, and perhaps oddly enough, it seems that they're using the same head for Wasp that they use on Pepper Potts. So you have two figures with the exact same face in the same set. I don't know. It's a little bit weird to me. But anyways, let's go ahead and lift up the wings here so you can see what the printing looks like on the back of the torso. It looks really accurate to the movies, honestly. I love that. And we can flip it around so you can see her angry fighting face. And I haven't even mentioned it yet that there is a micro fig Ant-Man in this set. And the designers mentioned that they didn't include a minifigure scale Ant-Man because we never see him at full size in Avengers Tower. We only see him at micro size when he's, you know, going to be flicked off of Tony's shoulder and all that in Endgame. So I do think that that makes sense. But again, it's a $500 Lego Marvel set. They couldn't have also included a minifigure scale Ant-Man. And heck, they couldn't have included that instead of Dr. Cho or instead of Wong with his mayonnaise hot dog. I don't know. I really don't want to seem like I'm nitpicking too much, but this is the most expensive Lego Marvel set ever. And I feel like there are just a couple head scratchers here as far as the minifigs are concerned. We do get a couple generic shield agents here, and I do like that they have the shield logo on the torso there and the shield abbreviation on the back. Now, if we lift the helmets up, you can see that uh, only the female has an alternate head, but neither of these heads are exclusive to this set. Um, so they have been used elsewhere, and that doesn't bother me for generic figures like this. They're actually pretty good army builders, so again, I'm not really bothered by that. Now, this one is an awesome inclusion. I love that when you put the goggles down, you can't really tell it's Tony Stark, but when you push him up, it is Tony in the shield disguise. I think that is so cool. And of course, he's got the little briefcase there with the Tesseract in it. Of course, the Tesseract isn't actually in it. You got to pretend for that. But overall, this is a great figure to include. And even though it's simple and it uses the same torso as the previous two figures we looked at, it is one of my favorite figures in the entire set just because it's such a cool inclusion. 
And finally, we have Kevin Feige. Yes, this is actually Kevin Feige. It's referenced on the box, and I love this. He's got a brand new torso. He has a shawarma piece that you can put in his hand. Of course, he's got the little coffee cup there. He's got a brand new head, a brand new head for Kevin Feige that has never been used on a figure before. And he does come with an Avengers A logo ball cap, which of course is something we've seen him wear in real life. And this same hat is going to come in the gift with purchase if you buy this set the weekend it comes out. So it's kind of cool that that piece is not gonna be exclusive to Kevin. I know I've talked a lot about pieces being shared on figures, but that's one that doesn't really bother me because I'd love to put that on my own set thing you know what i mean so that being said that's our final figure to take a look at the set does count dummy as a character so it's worth talking about that you could you know place dummy on a stud like that and it will stay in place and then of course you've got these ball joints that can allow for dummy to move around and help iron man suit up and we also get arnim zola now the designers in my interview with them mentioned that they don't count this as a figure in the set or a character but they said that they probably should have with retrospect uh so this is really cool it is two sticker elements here so no printed pieces to build zola but but it is very, very cool and a definite cool inclusion. In fact, one of our first actual references to the Winter Soldier movie ever in a Lego set. So hopefully that means good things for the future. I would love to see some Winter Soldier Lego sets someday. Now we do get a Leviathan, one of the giant space worms from Avengers and from Endgame, crazy enough, but this is such a cool inclusion, and honestly, I think that this set would be worth the price even if this wasn't included, but the fact that it's in here is so great. There is quite a bit of flexibility. You could kind of move the mouth from side to side, although it does look a little weird if you give him the droop snoot thing from the Concord making a Lego reference joke there, excuse me. But when you close the mouth, it is a bit odd that there's so much open space there. So it really is meant to have the mouth like kind of open. The teeth are really nice in there, the way that those are built. You could move the fins on those ball joints and then you could move these back fins and the entire body can kind of like do the worm just like you see it in the movie, which is very, very cool. Now, one other thing I want to mention is the Thor figure, as we talked about, comes with this cool piece so you can have him throwing Mjolnir at the Leviathan but we do get a bunch of these clear discs so that you can set up like play scenarios in and around the tower so that is very cool and when you build the set keep an eye out for all of the extra clear pieces so that you can have characters flying around and stuff. So one other thing about the Leviathan is it comes off the stand very easily not in a bad way it's just you could take it off and you could set the Leviathan aside and use this stand for the Quinjet to have it flying around. I didn't see that advertised anywhere on the box or instructions, so I guess I'm gonna claim that idea as my own, but that is pretty cool that you can do that. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the Quinjet now. So much like the Leviathan, including the Quinjet at all is such a cool added bonus. Now, this is technically the smallest Quinjet we've ever gotten that's meant to, you know, go along with minifigs. That's not counting like polybag Quinjets and stuff like that. There is room for one figure to kind of like lay inside. So we'll use Black Widow as our example here. And when you put Black Widow in, she just kind of lays back and then you clip that through. As far as play features go, there aren't very many. You can move the wings up and you will need to move the wings up and fold them in to fit it in the tower, which I'll show you when we get to that part of the video. And we have stud shooters on either side that shoot out a blue stud. So again, this is just one of those very cool bonus things that didn't need to be included, but definitely helps justify the price because it is here and I love that. The Chitari Flyers and Loki's Chariot all have dedicated spots on the tower, which again, I'll show you when we get there, but the two Flyers themselves are absolutely identical. You build the same thing twice, and there's a little hinge on the back, and that hinge connects to Loki's Chariot. I do find that they are just a little bit on the flimsy side. Not to say that's a nitpick or anything, but like, they're definitely not built for heavy, heavy play, and they're really just for display on there. So, they do look great. Look super movie accurate. Just be aware that, you know, these aren't for little ones to be flying around with and playing heavy with because they do kind of lose pieces a little bit easily. So because of the monumental size of this set, I do want to take a brief look at the instruction booklets. And it is cool that as the instruction booklet goes on, you lose the Stark letters and just end up with the Avengers A. Gotta love that. Now, there are a couple things I want to point out. Now, as we open up the book, we've got some cool homages to the MCU, which I will let you guys pause and read if you would like to. 
and there's definitely a lot of cool insight here as to how the set was designed, what was going on, and of course this artwork. I would love to have a poster made up of that. So of course the instructions are as you see, and as you go through the instructions, there are some cool little designer notes in here with MCU references and of course a little bit of humor thrown in too. One other thing I'd like to talk about is some missing pieces my set actually had. So if you look, we've got this one by two tile here that's like the grate. And unfortunately, my set only came with these, which is a very similar piece. If you look at them side by side, it's supposed to be that piece right there, but it came with an equal amount of this piece. So I had enough of these in my collection that I was able to supplement it, but it is kind of crazy that my set was technically missing pieces, or maybe in this case replaced with a similar, but not quite the same piece. All right, let's start by taking a look at everything here out on the street. We have these barricades to stop vehicles from getting up to the front door, and there's a very cool sticker here commemorating the Battle of New York, the memorial, and we've got an Avengers logo there, and then the names of all six original Avengers. This is a clear sticker that goes onto this large piece and it does look really good although it is kind of funny that there's a memorial for a battle that's technically happening all around because of the chitari flying around and stuff inside of this garbage can there's a pack of bubble gum and i'm not really sure that that's particularly an mcu reference but something else kind of funny is right next to that if we lift up this bench you can see there's a pink stud back there so somebody obviously stuck their gum under the bench there are plenty of jumper pieces here that can allow you to put mini figures like Kevin the Avengers fan right here. And there's a fire hydrant here and a pole. And as you can see, we've got some pieces here that are the clear pieces I referenced earlier that allow the characters to be flying around. On the side, you can see we've got these pins that will allow this to connect to a modular. And then as we flip it around to the back, you can see we've got a flyer for the Captain America exhibit, which was first advertised on last year's Sanctum Sanctorum. We also have an exit only sign and an Avenger sticker. And of course this door opens and will lead you into the first floor, which we'll look at in just a moment. Over here, we have a one by two piece that has a sticker on it. And this of course is Nick Fury's pager to reach Captain Marvel. Off to the side, we have a trash bin here and said trash bin opens up and we do get some trash to put inside so there's a shawarma wrapper i'm pretty sure that's what that's supposed to be there's a little plant here just some trash and then we actually have a vial of pim particles you can see that we put a sticker on there and it is a clear sticker unfortunately you do get some air pockets there on the side but overall i do think this is the best that lego could do putting a sticker on there and yeah it looks really good and then of course that goes back here then I'll flip it around just a little bit further to show you the side here where we have more pins for Technic uh, so that you can fit this into a modular setting and then we are back to the front. I do want to give a brief spin around of the middle section of the building here. As you can see, we've got all kinds of areas for the heroes to be able to be flying around. There aren't any plugins on the back except for one right here. And then as we move to the side, you can see that we have all these Technic pins where you're able to put these, uh, you know, transparent pieces in to allow things to fly around. So you can get really creative with how you want to do that. But the se set suggests everything that I have it here set as. And then of course you can see that we've got Hulk sliding down the side here, just like we see in the movie. Although he didn't slide on Avengers Tower, but it is cool to have the ability to put him there in the first place. And as you can see, there are some window pieces here. And because these window pieces are just regular, you could technically reassemble this and put it there if you want the completed version. Honestly, I probably am ultimately gonna end up doing that because I like my buildings to look prim and proper and I don't so much care about, um, you know, the destruction on the outside. So I probably will fix that in the end. Now, one other thing I wanna show you guys, I'll show you, you know, Wasp and everything flying there up close, but while I have the camera set up here, I wanna show you how you lift this part out. So basically you just pick up both ends and pull it forward and then we can get to the interior. So we'll hop there in just a moment. So I love how this is built here, and this is the Mark VIII armor flying to Tony as he falls out of Avengers Tower from when he uh, suits up mid-air in the movie. And as you can see, this can be removed in Tony's back brace that we talked about in the minifigure section of this video, attaches there so that this can fly up. Now, again, with all of these open Technic pins, you're able to put Tony in various places at various heights on the tower itself, which I really like, or you could move any 
any of them there. So as I mentioned, we have Wasp flying around too. So you could put Wasp right above Tony, or you could really do any combination. But as the model spins around, keep an eye out for all of those pins and just know that you can put any of these transparent pieces wherever you want to make your own place. Now, as we go through the tower, you'll see I put some minifigs in there just so that you can get an idea for scaling and for how things are set up. So as you can see, there are these little brackets here so that when you go ahead and put that main window section in, it's going to rest against those white brackets. So you just kind of line it up and you can see how that kind of reinforces it to keep it from going too far back into the building. So as you can see, we have a bunch of jumper plates here that will allow you to put minifigs just about in any position in the building. And just to show you the interior a little bit better, I'll remove the minifigs. And this is one of my first complaints with the model is how dark it is on the inside. Remember, we have all these trans black window pieces. And from what I see in this set, unfortunately, it does not allow a ton of light onto the inside. So the back part of the desk there is very shadowy and honestly kind of hard to see. I did make one alteration to this set and you'll see as we zoom in on the elevators back there, there are some stickers there that show do not enter. There's a cross out of the Hulk, a hole open and a caution out of order sticker. These of course are referencing Avengers Endgame, but when you build the set these stickers are actually supposed to go all the way on the top floor and i'll show you why i put them here because you can't really see them on the top floor and i think it makes a lot more sense for the elevators to be out of order on the ground floor to reference what we see in endgame now also on the interior we've got this little vending machine here i don't know that this is outright a marvel reference but we do have vita rush there which has been in a lot of lego city sets and things like that and of course we've got some cans in there you can remove Move the top here to get those cans out if you want any of your minifigs to get a drink. And we do have a PIM logo on the side, which honestly doesn't make a lot of sense. And if I were a designer on this set, I think I would have actually made a reference to the soda from the Incredible Hulk here. I think that that would make a lot more sense. And yeah, that's what we've got on the ground floor. One more thing before we go up a floor, this is the computer screen that goes on this stud back there on the desk. And there's nothing on the computer screen, but I didn't want you guys to think that I skipped over an Easter egg or something. Unfortunately, there's just nothing really there. On the second floor, we have our America's Ass reference here where Cap is admiring himself. And we'll go ahead and remove both Captain Americas just so that you can see some more of the detail. We've got some glass shattered on the ground here, which of course comes from right here where Cap knocks Cap off of the uh, glass walkway. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. But we can actually lift this up and out to be able to access the middle part a little bit better. So I like that a lot because there's a lot of details in the back that I want to shine a a little more light on so let's adjust the camera and go there okay so you can see we've got a cap shield up there from where the walkway was just a moment ago and we've got a computer here that has the mark 7 deploy so this is of course referencing the avengers film where iron man has it linked to his bracelets definitely very cool in the back we have dr helen cho's workspace and interestingly we've got a yellow infinity stone chilling out over there and some medical supplies in that bottom cabinet if we pan the camera up just a little bit you can see that this medical table is where Hawkeye gets worked on in Age of Ultron. And speaking of Age of Ultron, we've got a big blue bubble and an orange bubble here referencing Ultron versus Vision when they were both in their AI forms in Age of Ultron. So I guess technically that's actually Jarvis and not Vision, but you guys know what I mean. Moving the camera over just a little bit, you can see we also get the elevator here that kind of connects from the bottom floor and runs all the way up. But of course the elevator is not functional because you could see that the other side of the elevator are the windows right here. So overall, I really like the second floor. I forgot to mention we also have these chairs and I like it because I can fit my hand in there. You could feasibly move around and play inside there and it does look really, really good. And I love that Lego executed this floor so well. That brings us to the third floor, which is Iron Man's workshop. And we've got Dummy here that goes on a one by one jumper. So let's move Dummy out of the way just so we can see inside a little bit better. You can see that Tony is able to stand there, but this does not spin. It kind of looks like it would because it's so circular and everything, but it's actually stationary. So that's that. We'll move Tony out of the way and let's twist this around a little bit so that you could see the workbench over here. We actually have several references. We've got a little Iron Man style figurine, although there's no printing on it. And then we have these tool chests, which you can open up and we've got a cookie in the top shelf there. And 
a hundred dollar bill in the bottom shelf a little tricky to see from this angle but you could take my word for it we've also got the proof that tony stark has a heart little memorial right there and then as we flip it around you can see that there's all kinds of details in the back so first and foremost we've got a rocks on oil can back there like a big canister we also have a wrench laying on the floor and behind that we actually have a fire extinguisher which is a reference to how many lego superhero sets over the year have had fire extinguishers in them now i actually want to remove several of the panels from the back to show you them up close so i'm going to go ahead and do that now and we'll take a closer look but you you can see what they look like in the back of the room like that and of course we also have the elevator there which once again is kind of a through line to connect all the floor so in the back center we've got this hologram where tony is working on pepper's rescue suit it says work in progress and pointing to the arc reactor it says 3000 which of course is a reference to i love you 3000 which is so touching on one of the computer screens we've got a schematic for the arc reactor and some readings going on there on another schematic, we've got some DNA readings, which I can only assume are for the Hulk, but it's kind of uh, indiscriminate, so we're not exactly sure who this is referencing to, but it definitely looks like something that would be on a Tony Stark computer screen. Speaking of computer screens, we'll take a look at these two. This one says Loki, no match on it, and this is referencing when they're trying to search for Loki in the first Avengers movie, and that's pretty cool. Then on the other one, we have a readout for the Quinjet, and you've got Black Widow there, so she's either like on a call into, you know, Avengers Tower, or it's just showing who's piloting it. It's not really super descriptive, and one thing is, it's a little bit of a bummer when they use these tiles uh, and put a sticker on, because these stud receivers receivers on the back kind of make the sticker a little bit difficult to read and I've always felt that way regardless of the Lego Marvel set but they do look decent from a distance it's just when you look up close some of the details kind of get washed out by the uh, pieces or the receivers behind it if you know what I mean. Finally we've got one more reference and there are Ultron blueprints that are on a sticker on the back and this actually has several references so here we have V 2.0 which is referencing the Ultron armor that first used this helmet and head combo back in 2015. This looks like the Stark Industries logo, just kind of the shape of it. And then up in the top left corner, you can see 1968 uh, number sign 54. And so what that is referencing is the year 1968, Avengers issue number 54, which was the first appearance of Ultron in a comic book. So this brings us to the fourth floor, and I'm just going to twist this a little bit so that you can see Wong, who is coming in through a portal on the side here. Of course, you can move this around and put it anywhere on the building, but the set does suggest putting it here, so I thought I'd show you it in the context the instructions offer it. Now, before we get into Easter eggs on this floor, I will show you the play functionality, and this opens up so that you could put a prisoner minifig inside. In this case, it's going to be Loki, just like the movie, and that closes up there. Now, of course, in the movie, this prison set actually takes place on the helicarrier but in the context of this set I do think it makes sense and it's definitely a nice play feature. Now as we look at the room as it sits I'm gonna twist it a little bit to the side and you see the elevators back there that is where they suggested putting the Hulk out of order elevator stickers from before and technically this is like the most blocked off area of the building where we have an elevator shaft door so I really didn't want to put those stickers there and have them be lost so that's why I put them on the ground floor but technically if you follow the instructions those hulk elevator stickers are supposed to go there now we do have a couple references here but i need to remove this in order to access the best and this is a good way to show you that it is relatively easy to remove this if you want to it is going to come off in pieces a little bit but honestly it looks pretty good without it too so you could turn this into whatever room you want with uh mocking capabilities and i'll look forward to seeing what somebody does with all this empty space now here we have Arnim Zola. We looked at him in the minifigure section, but we'll take a look at him again here because uh, this is a very cool moment to have the Winter Soldier movie referenced. And then the only other reference on this floor are the stack of newspapers, and it says, Who is the Iron Man? Which is referencing the newspaper from the end of the first Iron Man movie. And it is pretty cool to see that Iron Man minifig on there, and it looks really great. Although it's not a reference, we also do have a bucket chilling out behind Loki's thing there. Not really sure if that's a reference to something or just to make it look a little bit more lived in, but it's there. 
Before we go up to the next floor, I do want to point out on these curved cylinder pieces, as I move it in the light, you can see that there are some scratches on the pieces. That's the way they came out of the bag, and I understand that pieces are going to move around in transit and everything, but again, I'm reviewing this as critically as I possibly can so that you guys can know if you're getting a good value or not. And look, this set is awesome. It's the best Lego Marvel set ever, but I've had several pieces that came in it that had scratches and dings on them. You can reach out to Lego and they will replace them if you want, but for the integrity of this review, I'm showing you it the way it was sent to me, and you can make of that what you will with the scratched pieces that are in here. So now we're on the hangar bay level, and I wanted to show you the minifigures where the set suggests you put them, just so that you could see what it looks like like when you build up the set as it suggests. So you can see you've got Hawkeye making a dive here, shooting up at a Chitari. And uh, over here, we've got Vision flying into battle and Scarlet Witch. As we turn the model around, you can see we've got the big Avengers A logo. Now, this does utilize a new way of building the Avengers A compared to the last time we got an Avengers Tower in 2020. And you can see we've got a sticker on the side here to get some of that detail. And I love what they did with the trans black 1x4s here just to kind of help build it up and make it look great. So again, I want to give it a spin because we haven't given a full look at the exterior of this floor just yet. And I really like the way that it was all built up together to look. Now on this side of the tower, we do have a little bird sitting by the Avengers A. And make note that we do have these little uh, receptacle pieces here that you can put the J-hook pieces into. So, you know, for example, you could have Wong coming out of his portal in front of the Avengers A this time or something like that. Anyways, that brings us back to the front and let's clear the minifigs so we can look at the build itself. So here we are at the hangar bay, and you can see that we used all these flat tiles here to build a really cool landing design. And there are also these pieces here. I can push that one up, actually. And these are piping pieces that are bent to go the whole way around. Um, and yeah, I think that that looks good as kind of like a guardrail. Then you can see that there's a piece here that turns, and we've got it over here. And I left Hawkeye there so that you could see that, you know, in your play adventures, you could move Hawkeye over to this side. You could do whatever you want and have all these clips. You could have a character flying off of there. You could really use your own imagination. But we'll go ahead and take the Quinjet, and you want to make sure that the wings are folded up, and then it can back in a little something like this, and it actually fits all the way into the model. So I'll turn it on its side so you can see what it looks like when it's parked on the inside, and I'm really impressed with the scaling and the functionality of being able to take a Quinjet that can fit one minifigure and fit it all the way into the tower and then have it take off for an adventure. We've got a roof piece that we can remove, and we'll look at it in a little bit more detail in just a moment, but that does allow us access onto the inside. So let me adjust the camera so you can see it. I just wanted to show you how the roof comes off. Now inside, we've got the little hangout area where the Avengers can sit on the couch for the party scene from Age of Ultron, where everybody tries to lift Thor's hammer, which is on the table there. We do have a reference to the Battle of New York here and also a Daredevil reference because this is the New York Bulletin where Karen ends up working in the Daredevil seasons uh, one, two, and three continuity. So kind of interesting to get that reference there. And yeah, that's basically it for here that I can show you from this angle. So let me move the camera again. We've actually got a full bar in the back, kind of interesting in a Lego set. There's even like some scotch and whiskey bottles there. We've got a plant back in the corner and a uh, lamp over in this corner. Now we do have screens on the wall on one side. It's actually like a computer screen. It says how to lift heavy stuff, how to lift safely, Asgard cardio, and be an ant, all being pretty obvious Marvel references. We also have a file for Hydra being moved to the trash bin, and we've got a Who is Watching, Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, Hulk, or Thor Odinson, which is very cool. On the other side of the room, we also have a screen where it says, This Just In, Hulk Smashers Again, and weather update, Who is Winter Soldier? So again, another Winter Soldier reference. I do think it would have been nice if this was a Daily Bugle screen here, referencing the other modular in this series. But this is MCU and the Daily Bugle building is not MCU, so it does make sense why they didn't do that. I'm just saying, I wish they would have. Overall, this is a very cool floor and I love the way it feels so lived in and it's definitely a great inclusion here. 
Now I did promise we'd take a better look at this roof, so I'm gonna deliver on that. We do have some studs here where you could have a character flying uh, short there and a tall one here where you could put Falcon. But once again, everything is kind of modular in this, so you could put any character just about anywhere. You can see that when you lift this up, there is a little lip piece that sits over this curved piece. So now I will go ahead and take this out and you can see we've got these translucent blue pieces where that kind of sat on. And this is honestly a building marvel. There are two bendy pieces that kind of build up the spine and allow this to curve. So then you sit the bottom part under these little lid ledges there and then you put this here and it really locks into place. And I think that that is absolutely genius to get an angle like this, which normally would not happen in Lego, like an angle at that slope. Doesn't make sense for normal Lego pieces, but it really works here with those bendy pieces, and I love that. So we'll go ahead and remove those pieces there, and that allows us to see on the inside here, which admittedly is probably my least favorite section, although it has one of my favorite Easter eggs. So you can see we've got a sticker here where Loki has been smashed into the ground. So that's, of course, from the puny god part of the movie, and you can see where Loki's imprint has been left there. Over here in the corner, we just have some random boxes, and this is a reference to Tony Stark moving out of Avengers Tower. So if we lift this part up, you can see that there's a battery inside. I'm not really sure what that's referencing, but that's that. And then we do have a great reference here and one of my favorite references in the set, and it is the original first appearance Avengers comic made in Lego form. It's a really cool way of looking to see what these figures may look like if Lego were ever to make them. And this is honestly one of my favorite Easter eggs in the set. Now, I did mention that this is probably my least favorite floor, and you may be wondering why that is. And honestly, the only reason for that is how limited the space is here. Like, even though we have the Loki smash scene right there, you really could not feasibly take the Hulk minifigure and fit him in here to have him smashing Loki on the ground. So, I mean, it works, but this big piece here eats up a lot of room. And I understand why it's there for structural purposes, because when you put these bendy pieces back in, it kind of needs that middle support. I'm just saying that... I don't love the way that this floor plays out like the other floors here, and I guess one floor does have to be my least favorite at the end of the day. As we move up higher, we've got a little ledge right here where a character can stand, and as we turn the model, you can see we've got this ladder here where a character can climb up, and you'll see where uh, Eric Selvig is camping out at the top here. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the final room, and that is the Scepter Laboratory. So inside the Scepter Lab, you can see we've got some stickers here. I'll actually remove this screen so we can look at it up close. There's nothing really super specific on here, just some general readings. We've got a little uh, keyboard here, so you can see that this is like... Like an avenger style keyboard i know that that's kind of funny but this is what the keyboard looks like in the movie if you take a look at that we've got loki scepter there and then we have these sticker pieces as well so we'll take a closer look at those we've got a warning call for jarvis with an ultron helmet up in the top left corner and here we have the scanning of loki scepter and this is what i referenced in an earlier section where if you look this is the actual shape of loki scepter from the movie but then you look at what lego actually gave us and it's just a generic scepter so it's kind of funny that like the sticker can reference it but the actual piece we get doesn't look anything like what the sticker is saying it's reading and finally, that brings us to the top deck of Avengers Tower, where we have Eric Selvig able to stand next to his Selvig portal machine, which of course is pretty integral to the final battle of the Avengers movie. It's kind of hobbled together with a bunch of random parts, but that's exactly what you want. And it sits right here, just kind of locks into place. And then we've got these antenna here, and the model designer, Justin Ramsden, mentioned that he made this piece here just tall enough so that this is taller than Gringotts Bank. And that's pretty cool that we got two of the tallest modulars, if you will, in the same year, just a couple weeks apart, honestly. So pretty amazing. And that's just about all there is to say about Avengers Tower. I can't believe it, but that's it, guys. We've looked at every inch of Avengers Tower. Thank you guys so much for hanging out through this long video, and be sure to check out my other videos on the channel regarding LEGO superheroes and, of course, Avengers Tower. My final thoughts are, man, for 500 bucks, it is hard to think of a more awesome deluxe LEGO Marvel set that could ever exist, and while I do have some issues that we went over in the video, overall, this thing is an absolute behemoth. It is so much fun to build. The minifigure selection is awesome. 
awesome. And at the end of the day, it really is a Lego Marvel dream come true. So let me know what you think of this set in the comments down below. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and check out my other videos. And I'll see you guys on the next video.